Hello, everyone. Um, this is T Lovers Journal having uh, a chat with lovely Melissa, and we traveled virtually to Arizona now. Um, so before going through um, my question, Melissa, I would like you to um, have some sort of introduction. OK, thank you so much for having me on. Um, my name is Melissa Salazar, and I'm a certified tea master and blend specialist. Um, I started at a really young age drinking tea. I absolutely love it. So sharing my passion about tea and education is what I absolutely love to do. Um, it all started with my grandmother and when I was really young, I was one of eight kids, so we didn't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, but she gave us that time and she actually had tea time with us and she had us pick like the most beautiful cups you would ever see in the world off of her. She had tea racks like all over the walls. And so we would pick those out. And, you know, one time I said to her, I said, Grandma, aren't you worried that, you know, we're going to break your teacups because we were really little. And she said, honey, these are just things. And that really stood out for me because she was like, these are just things. The experience that I have with you and I have tea is what matters. It didn't matter that they were beautiful, expensive teacups. What mattered is that she was having that experience with us. And that's really where my tea journey began. That's great, Melissa. I love it. That's so touching. Um, yeah. <laughs> what about the business, uh, Melissa? I know that you are ru running that Red Zen Tea business, and I know you are doing the training. Let's go and first talk about that Red Zen and Tea company and what you do. OK. So, um, you know, I had gone through college. I, I originally got my degree in exercise, nutrition, and wellness, and I did part of my undergrad work on the ergogenic effects of green tea. And at the time, you know, I was an athlete and I really wanted some type of natural edge. And I found that, you know, I did all the research, found that green tea really does have performance enhancing benefits. And this really, you know, stood out for me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And, um, but, you know, still going through school, not knowing exactly what I was going to be doing, I ended up teaching health. And I said, you know, I really want to do something with tea. So I started my company, Red Zen Tea Company. Red is my nickname, so that is the company name, Red's wow. Zen Tea Company, because Zen is really what tea makes me feel. Um, it makes me feel calm, relaxed, focused, and that's, you know, what I wanted to portray. And then, you know, my slogan for my company is uh, educating the world one teacup at a time, because the education piece is so important to me. Um, and that's part of the reason why I did go into education um, and my teas, I decided, you know what, I want to have some blends that are different. I want to specialize in dessert teas. So I have a full line of dessert teas like, you know, apple pie, chocolate mint rooibos. I have uh, lemon cream pie. I have, um, I just came up with a new one, uh, chocolate hazelnut, which is a puer, and it's really, really good. So it gives you that, you know, uh, kind of like satisfaction from your sweet tooth, but at the same time, you're getting all the health benefits from the tea. And that's really what I wanted to create, especially for Americans, because their experience of tea has been primarily, you know, tea bags, and just regular black tea bags, or really, really dusty fannings from green tea. <laughs> okay, so based yeah. on what you're saying, that's the culture. Is, is it is still the culture for the tea bag, Melissa, or is it changing to other loop? Um, has been changing over the years. I have recently moved from San Francisco to uh, Arizona, so I definitely have been involved in the San Francisco tea scene. And, you know, tea education is really helping because it's bringing the awareness that there's so much more to tea than just you know, your regular tea bags that you buy in the store. Um, there are some really great tea places there uh, that you could go to that, you know, serve loose leaf teas. And of course you have your, you know, afternoon tea places as well, but you also have some more eclectic type tea places in San Francisco that are really popular. Um, here in Arizona, I don't see as much of that. I do see some afternoon tea spots that have some loose leaf teas. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of education here. So uh, that's definitely something that I want to help change and flourish in this industry for sure. Great. Are you doing any sort of workshop in the area to improve the awareness of the people, Melissa? 
Yes, absolutely. So I work with the International Team Masters Association and I teach T courses uh, for people to become certified. So uh, I teach the T Sommelier certification course. I also mm -hmm. teach the how to start your own tea business course and of course the tea blending course, um, which I'm also doing next week, which is super exciting because that's one of my favorite things to teach. Blending tea for me is my specialty and my specialty <laughs> and um it's it's what i love it's my creative outlet and um i just love the fact that when you blend different herbs together you get this amazing powerful synergistic effect that is so much more powerful together than it is by itself and that's what i love about blending okay that's great i, I love blending i myself of course i don't want to go through the details, I love blending and I do some blending as well, uh, but that's great. I mean, the way you are doing, creating something mm -hmm. as a mix of tea and herbal or herbal, whatever it, it is, uh, to make an impact and make a difference. So you have something new to um, offer to the to your customers or to the people. Um, yeah. Regarding the training that you mentioned, Melissa, can you elaborate a little bit more on those training? If someone wants to join those sort of training, what they have to do? Um, if you want to touch a little bit regarding, I don't know, the time frame, is it a week, is it one day course? Right. So um, most of the courses are held online right now, especially because of, you know, the COVID situation. We used to do them in person in San Francisco and um, now they're primarily all online. And basically what it is, it's usually a two or three day online, you know, course. And then the rest of the part two part of the course is all um, online, virtual, and it's on your own. And then basically what you do is you send in your information, you get feedback on the different tasting. So for instance, the tea sommelier course is about two days online course uh, with your tea master trainer. And then um, you sign up for that through the International Tea Masters website, uh, uh, teamasters.org. And uh, once you sign up, you, you get assigned to a tea master, which will be working with you personally. You get mailed, you know, all of the materials and everything you need for the course, including the manual and other, you know, reading materials. And then you go through the tasting course, you become a certified tea sommelier at the end. Um, the first part, all the tastings are done with the tea master and, you know, discussions and, you know, health education, everything about that um, for tea. And then the second part is done at home with readings, tea, more tea tastings, and then those are sent in to the tea master who gives the evaluations, dissertations, and then um, at the end there is a tea evaluation uh, to become certified. That's great. That's great. So sometimes it takes probably about six months total. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you have different options, tea sommelier, tea blending, yeah. different options. Yeah, the, the how to start your own tea business is a pretty quick course. It's usually two to three days online. And then the rest of the work is, you know, on your own. But it really does help jumpstart someone's business, especially if they are new to the tea industry. Um, and then the blending course is entirely different as well. Um, we actually create blends in the class virtually. It's pretty amazing. Um, and then when we do have them in person, we also do it that way. We create them in the class. I make sure that all of my students um, become, you know, really, really familiar with all the different types of herbs, all the different types of base teas and flavorings so that by the time they leave, they know exactly what they want to create, what their specific niche is for their market and um, where they want to go with their business. That's great. Um, what I want you to do, of course, when we finish our formal chat, mm -hmm. if you can send me the link of those, some of those details and the training and the options, uh, then when I um, upload the chat to our uh, Tea Lover Journal account, and um, I can share it with other people in case someone interested, they, they can get those information from you. Um, then um, considering this, the culture that you mentioned, Melissa, which mm -hmm. is maybe in Arizona, you, you said it still, is it more maybe tea bag or something like that? Yeah, or like Arizona, you know, RTDs, Arizona iced tea, you know? Okay, okay. <laughs> so. Um, and it, it, isn't this still the coffee is the majority, I mean, for the people use drinking I coffee? Would, 
say absolutely coffee is still the majority in the U.S. And that's something I want to change because it's, you know, it's funny because some people will say, well, I'm a coffee person. And I'm, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, you are for now. But, you know, eventually most people end up uh, switching over to tea just because of the acidity. As you age, we don't deal with acid as well. And tea, you could drink all day long and never have an issue. So eventually, they will be a tea person. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so true. Um, yeah. Regarding what happened in the world in the last year or so regarding the COVID and the tea and the health benefit, um, do you think there is a move for the people? I well, think so. I, I, and I really hope so because there is just so many different types of tea. It's like if you don't like one, there's, you know, 10,000 other varieties to try. And now that there's, you know, different companies doing blends and flavored teas, you know, there's just so much to choose from and so many different health benefits. And it's just so worth it. That's great. Um, you have been doing, um, I mean, this sort of business um, for a long time and training. I want to see if you have got anything to share with um, whoever watching this video later on uh, as a memory um, from your experience, whether this is a funny mm -hmm. story or anything like that, that would be great to hear your story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do have a story. I, I always like to tell even my registrants for my courses is that sometimes opportunities come in disguise. They come in ways where you feel overwhelmed and you feel like, gosh, I can't add another thing to my plate. Um, you know, once you decide to go in the direction of your passion and your love, the doors just open. It just expands and opens and the opportunities are there for you. Um, one, you know, example I have is I was really busy. I was teaching. I was teaching health classes. I was starting my business. I was teaching my online tea courses and I got a call from the Japanese trade organization. They wanted me to come and meet them at the Japanese trade organization in San Francisco. And at the time I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I have so much going on. I really don't have time to do that because they wanted me to meet with their tea farmers. And I didn't really know what the um, objective was for the meeting or anything. And I said, you know what? Because I remember someone telling me, just say yes, especially if it's in the direction of what you love to do. So I just said yes. I said, okay, I'm going to go and meet them. So I went and met them. It was the most amazing meeting. What they did was they had, they had several people come and meet with them. And what they did was they had lined out several different types of tea. They had an RTD, they had a, a high roasted sencha, they had a regular sencha, they had a lower grade sencha. And basically what they did was they had each person come in, you know, tea expert come in and, you know, say what they tasted from all the different teas. And that was really fun because for me it was like, well, you know, I love tea. I drink tea all day. And so it was a pretty easy test for me. But at the end of the test, um, it afforded me a trip to Japan to meet with the mayor of Kakagawa. So, it, you know, from that small meeting, it was so amazing because I got the opportunity to have one of the lifetime experiences um, in a country that I, you know, at the time was was just dying to visit. And um, so, yeah, so that was my story. And now it's like if something comes up, I'm a yes person all the way. That's great. Um, considering what you have done, Melissa, for the people that they want to start doing anything in the tea business, mm -hmm. do you have any suggestion, any recommendation for them, whether this is going to be the training part or whatever that you want to share with them? So my main thing I like to share with um, all of my registrants too is find your niche, find what you're passionate about. I was really passionate about fitness and exercise. And so creating the tea blends that I have with uh, that are dessert teas that are healthy, but they give you that sweet tooth uh, satisfaction. Um, that's my personal niche. Find your personal niche and that way you, you can stand out and you can be super passionate about what you're doing. Um, education is huge. Become educated, uh, become certified. It has afforded me so many opportunities just by having those certifications and I've been able to travel all over the world because of it. Um, so yeah, education and find what your niche is. That's great. Um, do you want to add anything regarding that blending aspect of what you are doing, uh, Melissa? Um, I love blending. I know there are probably a lot of people watching that are very just, you know, raw tea, straightforward, don't do anything to it. But I would like to invite you to 
to open your thought process in the way of the synergy that happens when you have two herbs that come together and you create something that's powerful intentionally uh, with that benefit in mind. That's great, Melissa. Yeah. Um, Melissa, thank you so much for your time and thanks for sharing that great experience that you have had. Um, I don't have any other question in my mind, but mm -hmm. I want to see if you want to add anything that you have forgotten to say during this 10-15 minutes chat. Um, the last thing I would just say is keep trying different teas. There are so many to learn. Um, you know, I learn different teas all the time. You know, even as a certified tea master, I'm continually learning. I learn from my students. Some of my students are better blenders than I am. I mean, it's amazing what people can come up with if in their own creative minds and their own creative niche. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Melissa. Great to have you for our chat today and thanks for sharing that experience. And that would be great, as I mentioned, to send me some of the links for mm -hmm. the training aspect of the, um, the tea business um, so I can share it with the people. Um, thanks for your time. If you have got a chance to come to Australia, that would be great to meet you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.